Greetings, everyone. Welcome back for another Naval History edition of the Proceedings Podcast, sponsored by the William Wood Foundation. I'm Eric Mills, Editor-in-Chief of Naval History Magazine, and we have very, a very special guest with us today. But just to set the table for you, on July 26, 1948, President Harry Truman signed an executive order that called for the end of racial segregation in the U.S. military. Detractors called it a social experiment that would undermine military readiness. Many argued that white and black soldiers wouldn't be willing to lay down their lives for one another. Two and a half years later, with the United States at war on the Korean Peninsula, two Navy aviators, one black, one white, would challenge those assumptions. Jesse Leroy Brown was born into poverty to a family of sharecroppers in Mississippi when Jim Crow was still the law of the land. Thomas Hudner, who hailed from Massachusetts, passed up Harvard to fly fighters for his country. These two young men from vastly different backgrounds would become fast friends. And from that bond of friendship would come one of the most inspiring stories of bravery and sacrifice in the history of naval aviation. It is, of course, the subject of the major bestseller, Devotion, and the highly anticipated new Hollywood blockbuster based on the book. We are very pleased and honored, as the movie is about to open later this week, to have as our guest today, Thomas Hudner III, the son of the legendary Tom Hudner, whose inspiring and amazing story is depicted in this film. Welcome, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Eric. It's great to see you. Um, this is a story that never ceases to amaze and um, uplift. And it's very easy to see why this would be such a powerful narrative for America today. And um, I invite you to kind of refresh mem uh, our viewers' memories of uh, what this is all about. And then I want to ask you what, what it's been like to have this movie coming out on uh, about your own father. It must be a profound feeling. But maybe if you could just run through the story itself for us to set things up. Sure. Uh, so my father, uh, again, uh, Thomas Hudner Jr., I'm the third. Uh, he was a naval aviator uh, serving at the time in Korea during, during the Korean War. And his wingman in, uh, in their squadron, VF-32, um, uh, during this particular action that is portrayed in, in the movie, uh, they were flying support for the Marines on the ground at the Chosen Reservoir, and as as you know and others know, that was a pretty horrific battle, and and uh, the Marines on the ground were severely outnumbered. Uh, conditions were uh, terrible and oppressive, uh, you know, sub-zero temperatures and and limited supplies, et cetera. So the the naval aviators were flying support for those Marines on the ground. Uh, my, my father and the other pilots from VF-32 were flying from the USS Leyte carrier uh, station there off the coast. And on, uh, so as you noted, uh, Jesse Brown was the Navy's first black aviator, uh, truly a, a, a hero and a pioneer uh, in his own right. And so on this, uh, during this particular mission on December 4th, 1950, when they were flying uh, in support of those Marines on the ground at the Chosen, uh, Jesse's plane was hit um, by ground fire and he was forced to crash. And while he survived that crash, um, he was not able to escape the, uh, the wreckage of the plane. And, and the wreckage of the plane was, uh, was in flames. And uh, um, as the pilots in the squadron circled, um, <laughs> my dad made the determination that he was going to go down and try and uh, try and save Jesse. So my dad made a deliberate wheels up landing uh, there on the, the mountainside um, and, uh, and made his way to Jesse's plane. Jesse, unfortunately, his, uh, his leg was pinned in by, uh, by the wreckage, by the uh, crumpled fuselage between the um, side of the cockpit and the controls. And so my father was not able to physically pull him out uh, of the plane. He called for a rescue helicopter. That uh, Marine helicopter piloted by uh, Charlie Ward, uh, who again um, served heroically that day and, and surely on other days um, came to their aid. And they, uh, they worked on it together. And, and unfortunately, they were not able to pull Jesse out because he was trapped. And um, Jesse ended up expiring there on the mountainside. And um, true Part of the story, which I always find quite amazing, is that um, you know Jesse's last words uh, were just tell Daisy how much I love her, and Daisy was his 
uh, wife at home and the mother of their uh, young daughter. So that is sort of the, the quick summary of, of, of the events. Yeah, I'll fill in a few details of that amazing story as well. Um, he force crash lands his plane. Um, your father does. Um, the, instead, he could have just waited for the evacuation helicopter. That would have been protocol. But his friend, and he wasn't just his uh, his squadron mate. They were they were good friends coming from completely different backgrounds, which is so amazing and really um, you know tight in that regard. And he said, "I'm going down. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna wait for the evac helicopter." And he runs over to Brown's uh, plane, but you know he's running through snow that's up to your you know, up above your knees. So that's a tough thing. And um, yeah, he and the, um, the the chopper pilot they they try heroically to remove Brown from there. And um, this was an amazing story. And what did President Truman do? He um, he presented your father with the Medal of Honor for this, and this is quite a thing. Um, and the fact that your dad never gave up on trying to get um, his friend's remains out of there is a part of the story as well. What follows afterwards is a huge part of the story as well. I believe that um, he and um, Daisy Brown became friends for life after this. I mean, is that the case? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they remained... Uh... They remained friends um, uh, throughout their lives. Um, you know, we, we uh, you know, the families have remained close. Uh, I mean, I remember the first time I was uh, able to meet um, their daughter, Pamela, uh, as an adult, um, you know, and we're, you know, she was born several years before I was, of course. Uh, um, so we're sort of of different generations, but I mean, I distinctly remember meeting her for the first time and telling her how, you know, I've felt for my whole life that we had this connection, obviously, um, you know, through what our, our fathers experienced together and how they selflessly served and sacrificed together. And, and so, you know, that's been a really fulfilling part of this whole experience you know this this experience over many many years really all all my lifetime i mean jesse's image uh you know has been burdened into my brain from as you know far back as i can remember so his his story obviously was so closely tied to dad's and and um i'm actually i'm i'm looking forward to to visiting hattiesburg mississippi which was uh jesse's hometown uh coming up on december 3rd for uh for an event uh, hosted by the family um, related to the to the film, and it'll be my first time uh, that I'm able to visit Hattiesburg, and and uh, but that was something that my father was able to do many times during his life, and uh, and actually I was just just in D.C. last week talking with Pamela, um, and she was recalling those visits uh, by my father and and how much that meant to them, but really, you know how much it meant to my dad to to be down there and, and, you know, he certainly experienced a tremendous, tremendous amount of, you know, hospitality and gratitude. And, and uh, so I think that ongoing connection, you know, 70 years later is, is a really powerful part of this whole story. And for me personally has been a really important part of, part of the experience and, and the process. I, understandable. Um, <clears throat> this was such a profound thing to occur in terms of civil rights and the nation as a whole, this, this very uh, thing that happened. The, um, there, the idea that a, um, a white man's willingness to cr crash land his plane to try to risk his life to rescue his black comrade, this was a revelation to early 50s America, Jim Crow America. And it, 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 um, it proved that the uh, naysayers about uh, integration of the armed forces who had said this very thing would be the problem uh, it, it quickly disproved that disavowed the world of that notion and it continues to resonate to this day um and so i'm not the least bit surprised that um the book devotion by adam makos is a fantastic book i'm sure um i don't need to tell you it's a fantastic book and it's a um it it is tailor-made for a, a major hollywood film and there's a lot of excitement and anticipation among our readers for this movie. Uh, we have a review coming out, Naval History Online, uh, the day the movie premieres. Um, 
And I can tell folks here, having uh, had advanced uh, ability to look at that review, this is an incredible film. And uh, it's going to be one that everyone wants to go see. Um, so, Tom, what has it been like uh, with Hollywood getting involved in your your father's story? And um, uh, what was what's this experience been like, the filmmaking side of this? Uh, it has been, I mean, I think the, 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 the word I've used most in, in uh, recent weeks has been surreal. Uh, and I would, I would say that again. I mean, it really has been a surreal experience. Um, and I would just uh, make special note um, of, of the book that you mentioned by Adam Makos, the, the book uh, also called Devotion. Um, and I would just say that Adam did an absolute incredible job researching and writing that book. And as I told him, uh, when I first read that book, it, it felt like it was a gift to me personally um, as, as dad's son and as a family member, because there was so much detail in that book that, uh, um, and stories and, and, and figures um, that I didn't know about uh, prior. And, and uh, so it really gave me a better understanding of my dad's experience and the experience of, of the men, men they served with. Of Jesse and his family, obviously Daisy's experience, his his, his wife and and then widow. Um, so that was really the first. I mean, obviously the men themselves were the ones who really started this story, but but Adam did um, just a phenomenal job uh, of telling that story in, in really rich detail. And then moving forward to to this movie process, um, it was uh, Memorial Day 2017 when uh, the actor Glenn Powell. Um, who uh, you know, some of your audience would know him as uh, Hangman in uh, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, so Glenn, and this was prior to Top Gun, um, sort of being on the radar for him, but he came to Concord, Massachusetts, where uh, where my parents lived. My you know my mother still lives, and uh, you know rented a car, no fanfare, rented a car, drove up from New York City where he was shooting another movie, um, and. Uh, just to meet dad, spend the day with dad and, and our family and, and get to know him and, and to talk with, with him and with all of us about his hope to make this movie. He had recently read the book. A number of his family members, sort of unbeknownst to one another, were reading the book and uh, were on, a, I believe it was a fishing trip together and, and talking about the book and, and um, how moved they were by it and by the story. And, and, um, and again, he wanted to meet dad and talk to him about his hope to, to make this movie and in fact to play dad uh, in that story. And so he, again, to Glenn's great credit, he built a lot of trust uh, with us from that very first meeting in terms of um, his appreciation for the story, for his appreciation and respect for military service and selfless service and selfless sacrifice, which is so prominent, um, you know, those themes are so prominent in, in the story. And so then it, it moved forward from there. And again, Glenn was really the spearhead um, because he started to pull the pieces together in terms of uh, ultimately helping secure the, the rights to the book through, through Adam Makos, the author, uh, bringing on board Black Label Media, which is the production company. And then really the, all the pieces um, subsequently started to fall into place with uh, a director in J.D. Dillard, and, and again, J.D. is an incredibly uh, good and kind human. He is also uh, the son of a black naval aviator. And so for him and his, his father not only served as a naval aviator, but, but was only the second African-American Blue Angels pilot. So uh, J.D. Had a, has a direct sort of connection to you know, through his own heritage, uh, his own has a direct connection to this story and 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 Jesse's story and and uh, to naval aviation. So that alone was pretty amazing to me that that he would be the person directing this this film. And then as all the other actors um, uh, came on board, the team that filmed the aerial all the aerial scenes um, in Top Gun Maverick filmed. Uh, those scenes in Top Gun, they were dedicated to using real aircraft. So, you know, the audience will see real Corsairs, Bearcats, Sky Raiders, MiGs uh, in flight uh, and, and in, you know, filmed from the air. With, 
and again, obviously, I'm 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 not a, quite a neutral observer here, but I think it's incredible. I mean, th those scenes alone are are worth uh, sort of the the price of admission. Um, so and and it was uh, Kevin Larosa who was in charge of the aerial filming, and and uh, again, just incredible work. And and I was fortunate; my family and I were fortunate to visit the set a couple times down in down in Georgia, uh, Savannah, and Statesboro, where a number of the scenes were were filmed. They built a full scale aircraft carrier superstructure on an airfield in Statesboro, Georgia, so they could do you know real takeoffs and landings, practical. Uh, uh, takeoffs and landings, as they say, and 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 a lot of those aerial scenes. They also did a lot of the the winter, you know, mountain scenes in Washington State. Um, you know, the there's a few scenes that um, involved uh, you know taking out bridges on the Yalu River, et cetera. So those were filmed out west, but it's just an incredible production and an incredible team who came together. And again, truly, every single person I encountered on the set or having anything to do with this project has been uh, genuinely a great person who is also truly and deeply invested in this story and doing it right. So obviously that meant a lot to me personally, it meant a lot to the Brown family. Um, and again, I, I just give a lot of credit to them and, and express a lot of appreciation to them. That's wonderful. You just got me even more excited to see this movie. Um... Uh, uh, one thing that's getting a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, advanced buzz is the uh, dynamic between the two lead actors. Apparently, they are very uh, convincing, uh, become the roles. Um, and that chemistry, when that chemistry is real on the screen, uh, that makes a big difference. And apparently, they really deliver the goods. Um, so how would you rate uh, the actor's performance of, as your father? Um, that's got a that's that's a unique position you're in to be watching somebody portray someone close to you like that. Um, what, what was your takeaway of that? I mean, I think Glenn truly did a phenomenal job. I mean, he's uh, he is, as I said, genuinely a great guy. He, he's I, I think his his uh, good character um, and earnest uh, and honest character come through in in the portrayal. And I would say those are. Um, kind of central characteristics of of my father, and and uh, and I think he really captured the balance of you know capability and confidence with a very understated, humble nature. And you know, Dad was selfless, um, you know, as selfless as the day is long, or whatever the the, the saying might be, but. He really was always throughout his life uh, more concerned with the others around him than he was about his own his own well-being. And so, obviously, given the story uh, that we're you know we're talking about here and that is um, at the center of this movie, those characteristics were were uh, again central to to who he was and and to the story and and um, kind of the seminal moments of of this story and and. You know, yes, it, it it's certainly a bit strange to see anyone portray a family member, you know, particularly your father. Um, but I think uh, Glenn really just did a, a absolutely phenomenal job. And and again, a lot of that was was established with that first meeting and and how invested he was. And and you know, I said to Glenn when we first met, and and uh, truly it wasn't a threat, but uh, I was just, I guess I was sort of imploring him. But I said. That I would rather, as a family member, I would rather that a movie not be made than for it to be made by, you know, people who weren't really invested in the story, who didn't care about the story, or who would sort of mistreat the story. Um, you know, obviously the characters, particularly of, of my father and Jesse, I think in the wrong hands, those could become caricatures. And uh, for them to be portrayed, you know, honestly and accurately on film um you know that's a feat and they both i think jonathan majors as jesse and and glenn powell as my father um you know exude uh the appropriate characteristics and personality and, and also i mean in jonathan i think the audience and myself included learn a lot about what jesse experienced as the first black naval aviator uh the obviously the discrimination and, and prejudice that he faced 
not only as a private citizen, but during his naval service. And, and, you know, those are, those are serious, those are serious topics and serious issues. And, and Jonathan is certainly powerful in, in that role. And, um, as is, um, as is, uh, Christina, who plays uh, his his wife Daisy. I mean, again, yet another powerful, um, powerful performance. And and um, again, I think I think it's really eye opening for all of us in the audience. And again, I speak for my own family and, and myself, but anyone else watching this movie. And so that's my long winded answer to your short question about Glenn Powell. But I think Glenn and the entire cast really do a phenomenal job. Oh, yeah, this is so exciting. And, and it's got to be very gratifying to see a family member ably portrayed and accurately presented um, in something like that. Um, the first thing for me would be a sense of relief and then a sense of just immersion in this story about my loved one. And um, yeah, the, the acting is getting rave reviews. This, the, uh, the, the aerial effects are supposed to be, as you say, just mind blowing. Um, I have good feelings about this film and I wish it well. Um, but the story doesn't just end with the attempt to get him out of there, um, does it? I mean, your father pursued some sort of closure for this all the way until recent times, did he not? Um, I believe it, he was 89 in 2013 when he went back to Korea to attempt to get his rema uh, Brown's remains brought back. So he never really gave up on this, did he? <laughs> Sorry, I think it's getting dusty in here. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he um, he was determined, uh, you know, hopeful and determined throughout his life to um, to see Jesse's remains returned, and and he did return to North Korea, which was, you know, I think in and of itself a, a you know reasonably harrowing uh, trip. I mean, he was, as you said, eighty nine years old, and and. Uh, and actually back to author Adam Makos, I mean, he was uh, a central kind of partner in, in that trip. Um, and I believe you're sharing that photo of them, uh, you know, sort of negotiating with senior uh, North Korean officials to, um, to try to re return to the crash site and try to uh, recover those remains. And, and unfortunately, at that time, during that trip, uh, it was apparently monsoon season. The, the roads uh, to the Chosen Reservoir were washed out and they were not able to, to get there. Uh, I guess, I, as I understand it, even if they hadn't been washed out, these gentlemen, including my 89 year old father, were gonna be you know, sleeping in tents on the side of, uh, you know, side of a mountain. So it wasn't going to be um, a cakewalk, as they say. Um, and, and he, so again, I, th I think his, I guess, you know, I, I wasn't surprised that that was uh, that he was so determined to see that happen throughout his life. I mean, that's, again, the, the type of person, you know, my, my father was. And and um, and I think, you know, the hope of this kind of overall journey is that indeed we might see Jesse's remains recovered uh, and returned to the United States and, and given a proper burial. I mean, I know that uh, the family, obviously, their, their desire would be to, to have his remains returned um, and to, to give him a, a proper burial at Arlington National Cemetery. And, and um, you know, and, and, and the people, you know, Black Label Media, Fred Smith, uh, who, who is, uh, you know, founder of FedEx and a major, major financier of, of the film uh, and a former Marine himself. I mean, he personally has has taken up this this charge and and so the hope is that part of this you know one one positive end result of this whole you know journey might be to see those remains uh, return to the United States which would which would be incredible I mean for me personally <laughs> uh, it would be so fulfilling and powerful and I know that my father would be just really pleased and gratified to know that that you know that that would happen. That would be an amazing happy ending to what would now be a three quarters of a century old story. Um, boy, let's keep our fingers crossed and prayers for that one. That would be amazing. Uh, well, a lot of people, a lot of our readers are going to be seeing this movie this long Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Um, what would you want them to most take away from the experience of seeing this film? 
I mean, I, I think the, well, first of all, I would want them to know that, um, again, it was just, a, it has been and is a really incredible team uh, that have come together to, to bring this story to the big screen. I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, truly every person I've encountered throughout this process uh, has just been a, a, a great person who believes so strongly in the story and, and doing it right. So uh, that makes me feel good as a, as a family member. Hopefully it makes people feel good, you know, going to see this movie and knowing the integrity and care with which it was, you know, created. Um, you know, and, and I hope that the, I hope that they take away a better understanding of what Jesse Brown experienced as the first black naval aviator, how he uh, is truly a, a hero in his own right. And, and he was one of the many, many, many men and women throughout our history who have uh, given their lives for our country and, and he should be honored uh, and saluted um, appropriately. And I hope that they would take away the, those themes of, of selfless service and sacrifice. And, and, you know, most of us are, are fortunate in our lives not to be faced with the conditions or the circumstances that dad and Jesse were faced with. But I think any of us can take away, you know, those themes of, of selfless service and, and to, uh, you know, of, of putting uh, those around you above yourself and their their needs and, and, and concerns and well-being above your own. And so I hope that those themes would resonate. And whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter sort of what your vocation is, where you live in the country or the world. Uh, you know, I, I, I would hope that those themes would, would resonate. And, you know, and, and obviously I hope they enjoy it. It is, uh, you know, it is intended to be entertainment, but, but uh, meaningful entertainment. So uh, I've seen it now several times. I've enjoyed it probably more each time I, I watch it. And uh, I hope that the audience has that same experience. Feeling that they will. And if Americans need something additional to be thankful for this Thanksgiving, I think a story like this underscores how we can be thankful for our real life heroes. Not our larger than life heroes, but our real life heroes who aspire to the highest degree of our own ideals as human beings. And that is very much at the heart of this amazing story. And I can't wait to see the film. And I am so honored to have met you, Tom Hudner III, and spoken to you about this. And I wish you the best. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think that's it for now, folks, uh, for the latest Naval History edition of the Proceedings podcast. Get out and see this film, Devotion. It looks like a real one for the ages. Until next time, I'm Eric Mills, editor-in-chief of Naval History Magazine, saying farewell. <laughs>